Hello and welcome to K and K Play D and D. I'm the first K, the Keith, and this is the first episode of Anna in Mokana because she goes to Mokana. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the second K card, and I'm stumbling over my words. And today's episode is brought to you by Cheese Danishes. We've been watching Bake Off. Let's get those dice rolling. Now, Sandra Bay's going to help me tell you what happened previously on K&K Play D&D. <laughs> previously on K&K Play D&D, we ran into... <laughs> and then there were some trolls that showed up, and finally there were some skeletons. <laughs> Anna and the Seabrook Company... Oh, the Seabrook Company. You joined up with Wyatt, and, um, well, that has, without a doubt, slowed your overall pace to Mokana. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the five of you are still on your horses, while he and his crew are on the wagon. How? And how many people are on his crew? How many of them survived? There is a total of four, including Wyatt and Yebe. So just, just two? Just two. They're, they are salty earth type people. They've been traveling and working with Wyatt for years. Okay. But they, they're they solid. All right. Uh, if you want to do a quick insight check, any of your people, uh, I'm just going to preface this since I am running two of your NPCs. If you want them to make checks, I want you to call that, so I will. Cool. Unless you don't, they will not do any checks. All right. I feel like Dorn would be a good person to do an inside check. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, <clears throat> it's a total of eight. Well, Dorn, you've worked with a lot of earthy type people and these guys seem earthy. And the only what reason why they didn't really get a good handle on the situation was those orcs must have really took them by surprise. Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, right. Well, in that case, I guess I'll roll a little bit. 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 Blah. 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 Yeah. Right. So that'll be a twenty-three. All right. See, Stone, you have a way with people, and as you're traveling with these two guards, they they do open up with you. These hours traveling, you're starting to swap stories and talk and hear about their lives. And they have been traveling with Wyatt quite some time. All right. Um, it seems like they both have a couple girls in cities in different places across Patchwork. I do my duty as a monk and tell them not to uh, spread their energy thin. <laughs> but they also talk highly of Wyatt and, well, the only reason that they were in such a place as they were when you found them was indeed the orcs and troll took them by surprise. And they, they do feel a little bit ashamed about that. How do they feel about the ones they lost then? They do, one of them would, had been with the group for a while, uh, two years, not as long as these two guys. Uh, they do mourn him, but realize he's been taken by Teth and Tath to the next place and are enjoying it. The other guy was relatively new, only with them for about two weeks. Picked up just before uh, they stopped by Fjordholm. I try to get in talking. Uh, there's something about talking about people who've passed on that helps mm -hmm. with the grieving. So I try to just get them talking and then I swap a few stories of my own yeah. since we just lost some people at the monastery. And actually, Seastone, from where you're originally from, you're not originally from... The, no, no, I'm a, across the bay from them. Exactly, you're not from the Blue Sea Keep. You do know of Ford... I'm sorry, Fjordhelm. Because... Sure. That is on the southeastern coast. I absolutely... Which is, you know... Uh, it's within shouting distance of where I'm from. It's about the same distance as Seabrook is from Wakana, as where you were from. To All right, I've been there a few home. times when I was young. You know, just a... When I was just a wee little kitten. It's definitely not as big as Wakana. No. So, you spend your time chatting up with the guards. Anna, how do you spend the next several hours of travel? 
I enjoy people. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I do. But um, I find my patience wearing thin. I'm, I'm happy to be traveling with them. Um, but nobody seems to be asking interesting questions about, for instance, where did the skeletons come from? Mm -hmm. Because undead just don't, they don't just pop up. Uh, you're, they're usually sent by something or someone. Mm -hmm. They're usually compelled to do whatever task it is that somebody has set them to do. And uh, nobody seems to be asking about that the way that I would feel it justifies. Okay. Do you want to do a quick insight check on this group to see if they might know anything? They might be holding something back from you. No, I doubt that's the case. Okay. I rather imagine that the grief of losing some of their own may have overshadowed that. Okay. But you, this is worrying in you. And... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. As you go, the afternoon does bleed into evening, and you come to a town. Add to a map. That's a pretty map. Oh, it's look right at that. here. Okay. You're coming in from the south. The town is along a riverbank, just on the north side, sprawling. Looks like it has grown up over time, been rebuilt a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and to get into the town, you have to cross a bridge. Okay. Um, a sturdy wooden bridge with a decent flowing river underneath. Mm -hmm. And as you come into the town and cross that bridge, the main road is paved. Uh-huh. So we're getting into the parts that Mokana actually cares about mm -hmm. out here. Yep. Anna, I'm actually going to only have you do a perception check on this. Great. Right. Still less than either of these companions, however. That'll do. Uh, that's a total of 20. The road, the main road through town, which is on the east side here of town, goes straight through. These blocks are large stone blocks, old, and these ones only run on that south-north road there. Mm -hmm. And as you cross the bridge, there seems to be faded engravings on these first couple blocks, as if they're starting a road. Can I tell what the engravings are? With that one, yes. It is a sail with a rose with a high spired crown. So this is the same crest that we saw on the skeletons? Yes. Um, excuse me, Yebe. Um, yes. What, whose crest is this? Oh, that is, that is the uh, old empire, old Mokanan empire. So it's not used anymore? Oh, there's a, a, a version of it that is still used, but that's, that's the markings of the old empire. I see. They had these great roads, and, uh, well, these markings showed where the roads started. That led you to the heart of the empire. Is there any enchantment on them, or, or were they just a sign? They may have been made with magical means, which just allowed them to last for so long, but uh, themselves are not. Interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The paved road goes forth, but as you're going through the town, the other roads leading off are paved as well, but hmm. they're cobbled. Oh, okay. cobbled so not stones. like giant paving stones, but no, just... No, okay. not like these old city ones. Mm -hmm. Wyatt seems to know where he's going at this point. Mm -hmm. like, he's not looking around. He's like leaning back in his his driver's seat of the wagon, holding the reins with one hand. Like, yeah, I know where I'm going. You're just chilling. Just chilling. One hand on the brake, one hand on the rein, just, just leading them through up that main road. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a quick description of the feel of the town. Mm -hmm. um, it is well-built buildings. Homes and shops and tradesmen's. Uh, several of the buildings look as if they've, or parts of them, have been around for a long time. Uh, stonework levels, stonework facades, all that. Mm -hmm. Especially some of the larger ones, uh, larger shops, places like that. Okay. There are no walls. Uh, the south so side. It's un unprotected except for the river. Except for the river on the okay. south, you're right. Just to the north, you can see a watchtower peeking above the town. 
<laughs> like beyond the town? Yes, just to the okay. north off of the main road that you're on. Okay. It, just outside of town, it's taller than any of the buildings around. Um, the tallest is a three-story building, mm-hmm. um, but the watchtower is taller than that, and it seems very old as well, weathered by time, rain, weather, but still still there. You do see a couple. It's still a serviceable um, place. Okay. So the, there are a few people out as well. They seem nice. Uh, a few of them wave and greet Wyatt, calling him either Wyatt or by his real first name, depending on familiarity with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are mostly humans, okay. though you do see a couple dwarves going by. One, you guys do a perception check as you're traveling down the road. Could we give that one to True? Okay, I can have True do that. Let's have True and Dorn do one. That'll do. How about you? Yeah, I, uh, six plus uh, 12. Dang. So, uh, 18. Right, well, I got a 23. Yeah, that, that is, uh, good. Uh, the two of you see a dragonborn off in the distance. A golden dragonborn, that's all that you can tell, uh, with the robes that they're actually wearing. So they, they look golden because of the robes? Or? Their scales are gold. Scales, scales are, gold. are gold, but they're wearing robes. Do they look monkish? No. All right. They look perhaps noble. No. All right. So Wyatt takes you up that um, main street after one, two, three possible turns. He takes you on the third turn left into the town, which is, well, there's the the village square there with a big tree in the middle. It's where most villages have their big hoot nanny. And he takes you to the largest, largest building in the village, which is, well, of course, like any great fantasy town, it's the inn. Yeah, yeah. It is the three-story inn. Uh-huh. Wide, lovely looking. There's a sign reading. Um, there's no image, actually. It's just in common okay. on the sign. And, it's ha- and it says, the Great Mokanan Inn of Green Hill Village. Great Mokanan Inn. inn. Green Hill Village. Yes. But no image. No just, image. Just, just text. Just the text. All right. Which is a little strange. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to do a quick perception check on the village as you've come through, I can give you a Well, good you know, one. I like watching the people, so I guess that one falls to me. Okay. That will be a 23 again. 23. Awesome. Uh, well, the village town, it's been here for a while, hundreds of years. It's been rebuilt and reworked many times and has spread past the original uh, confines, which... So perhaps we might find an inner wall. You might, you might not. Uh, You'd have to investigate the village to see if there's a wall. Right. The stone foundations of the original village have remained, and there is a uh, a temple nearby that seems to have been uh, mostly untouched. There, can we see it from the... You can the, see it down the road. Uh, um, a block away from the inn, there's a Y, you know, a fork in the road, and it's right there at the fork. The traditional circular domed building of mm-hmm. a builder's temple. Mm-hmm. Can we see which builder? With that one? Yes. It is Samick and me and Caloria. Granted, Caloria is an avatar, but... People treat Caloria as Caloria. All right. Good. Also, as Seastone, you've been watching the villagers go about the sure. end of their day. Well, and I imagine they're staring back at me. They don't likely see my kind very often. <laughs> Not often, true. You're, you're very true on that. Well, or true's or kind true. very often. I'm actually <laughs> a, a little bit more concerned about her than about me, because people tend to be curious about Tavaxi, and they tend to hate tieflings. That is very true, yes. Open suspicion and... They're scared. You get this sense of unease laying just below the surface here. All right. Um, There's a tightness in the corners of people's eyes, a wary look cast surreptitiously at you, and with that roll of, what, 23? It's not your race. Oh. Is it because we're wearing monk robes? No. 
So they're not so, just staring at the two of us, they're staring at the whole group. Yes. And as you, you're riding towards the back of the group sure. with the guards, sure. you're, you're looking around at the doors and the buildings, you have noticed there are some odd marks on the doors. Marks? Like how? You would need to make an investigation on some of these doors to do it, um, but there are, not every door has it. Is it like something drawn on or something scratched on, or is it like a, is it, a, is it purposeful? Yes. I, I can only give you that without an investigation check. All right. Well, I'm not going to go wandering up to somebody's door just to look at it. Is is there a mark on the inn? Um, with the inn door, you can't really tell. It's scuffed. It's banged. This is a, a working door. Right. Like, people are passing through it all the time. So even if there was something on it, it may have gotten rubbed off long ago. Yeah. All right. Uh, Wyatt essentially leaves his wagon to his workers to deal with, mm-hmm. Yebe and the guards. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a stable um, just next door to the inn, uh, to mm-hmm. the east by mm-hmm. the, the, the square, the sure. village square. But he, Wyatt himself, goes in to the, the inn while everything else is taken care of. He, uh, he likes to announce his presence, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I follow rather more quietly. Okay. Uh, what do you do with your horse? I'll send him to the stables. Okay. So, Anna, you're going by yourself. Well, no, I imagined all of us were going. Okay, so you guys take care of your horses and then go in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just, just making sure yeah. the order. All right. Have you noticed how people are staring at us a little bit? I imagine that you experience that a lot once you get outside of Seastone, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Ah, but I think this is a little more than that. Does anyone fancy a trip down to the temple? See if anyone's there. See if they've heard of Caloria. Aren't you following him? Uh, yes. Yes, I I am. You see, there's a temple here. Ah, the big round thing down at the end of the street. Aye. Now, there's no need to be sassy with the lady. She's not from around here. Yes, there's a round building with a big dome on it. That'll be the temple. Ah. Perhaps we should, uh, Check on Wyatt and get rooms before we uh, wander the uh, town, yeah? Uh, that sounds like a mighty fine idea to me. And we could also uh, ask Maximus to uh, sniff around first. Sure, Maximus. I had an idea, or I, I saw a thing. There are some marks on the doors. Yeah. Did you see them as we were coming in? A little bit. There was stuff on doors. Well, it looked to me like it was yeah. intentional. It wasn't just a, <clears throat> wasn't just an error. It wasn't just a scuff or something like that. You want me to go uh, check it out? I want you to see how many there are and see if the look is consistent. <laughs> All right, give me. See food. if it looks like it's something that the residents put on, or if it's something that other people have put on. I'll just be another cat. Give me food. That's and the idea. He trots off. Disappearing into the streets, like that a, was uh, well spied of you. I didn't notice anything on the doors. Ah, well, when you notice that people are looking at you, like you look back, don't you? Can't say I've had much experience. Go inside. Yes, we go inside. All right, broad double doors. Actually, it's not a single door. <laughs> my mistake on the door. My it's notes. Double doors. <laughs> double is doors. It, is it a happening place? We'll see. Let me go through my notes. (laughs) The broad double doors lead into a wide common room. Okay. Several long tables and corresponding benches line the space. On the west side, to your right, is a long bar, behind which are rows of wine bottles and several large tapped kegs. I like the looks of this. (laughs) Next to the bar is another door leading to the kitchens. Of Mm -hmm. course. And as always, there's at least one person standing stationed there. Can we see the stairs from this larger room? Yes! They are in the very back of the common room. You're essentially facing them as you come in through the front doors. Flight of stairs going up to the second and third floors to the rooms for hire. Are those on a mezzanine or is it a... Uh, Just another another level up. There's no mezzanine in this place. They've... Uh, maximize usage of space. Understood. (laughs) 
Uh, to the east, your left, is another set of doors. They lead to private dining rooms and whatnot. Sure. More expensive eating. Right. Uh, around, around the common room, decorating the walls, are ancient weapons and armor and oh, shields. None of which are in the best of um, repair. But it's it's antiques. Yes, they're they're old. They're, there's some patina, some rust on them. If you want to do a uh, investigation, I check. would love to. I would I would love to. I love old armor. I love old old weapons. They're so fascinating, and mm-hmm. you always wonder about the people who owned them. Yes. Uh, investigation, you said. Sure. Great. Twelve. Twelve. Um, they seem like they've been used, and they are old. And you notice one thing that keeps popping out on the armor and the shields. Is they... it that crest again? Yes. Interesting. All right. So these are these are Mokanan weapons. So exactly. Presumably, people who live here, maybe this was the site of a battle, or maybe their ancestors were soldiers. Or maybe. Or... I will give you this. Um, a few of them, the crests are slightly different. So they've been collected over time. Yes. All right. Or mm-hmm. perhaps from different fealties, like cities surrounding Mokana, perhaps. Possibly. I wouldn't necessarily know. You wouldn't I, know. I could you guess. Don't, you, I mean, I'm a, I'm a soldier. I know how these things work. You can guess, but they may have, from your soldier eye and experience that is locked within you, it's the evolution of crests. Mm-hmm. So as you enter the common room, it's half full. Mm -hmm. Noise washes over you, Mm -hmm. talking and clatter and people and yes. There are some people who there pause and take notice of you. You four, Mm -hmm. right? There's four of you? Yeah, four. Two humans, a tiefling, and a cat person. (laughs) Meow. And then Wyatt ahead. Wyatt. Ow. Did we... I, I think we probably came back with Yebe and the other two. They're probably behind you. Okay. So, you know, a group of seven of you coming in at once. Mm-hmm. It's a big group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, some, not all of them, take a look. And after the look, they go back to their conversations and meals and drinks. Mm-hmm. But there are a couple who do kind of watch you guys. Because mm-hmm. strangers. Wyatt, of course, is already there. He's at the counter to to your right, and Yebe makes a beeline for him, and he helps her up onto a stool and a big happy smile. The guards take a table to themselves, and after a few moments, Wyatt comes to you with this big grin on his face. You know, that that grin you've learned is Wyatt, man. This is just Wyatt. Yes, indeed we have. What news, sir? <laughs> oh yeah, I uh, I've got us uh, a meal. A meal's been ordered. It's coming. Ah, uh, it's gonna be great. And uh, I've uh, rented rooms. Okay, so there's gonna be one for me and Yebe, uh, one for my guards, and then one for you lot. I hope you don't mind, but uh, that's that's what I could do for you. So that's uh, got us three rooms. We'll be up on the th- third floor. Much appreciated. Great. Food, ink, dra- drink, rest. Tomorrow we'll uh, we'll get to Mokana itself. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, the food will come to you. You can sit with me and my boys here, or uh, find a seat. But I told the keep, you get some of my food. Thank you. Yes, that's a we're we're mighty obliged to you. Ha! <laughs> the night is yours. I uh, if there's. Nothing else, man. I am going to kick my own feet up. And no, by all means. And, uh, well, you can, you can find me if you have questions, but... Uh, yes, we will. The, the, the night is yours. Thank you. Until the morning when we travel out. My goodness, that man has a tongue on him. Yeah. I don't dislike him, but he does remind me of myself a little too much. What do you mean? Well, he won't shut up, will he? <laughs> All right, so the night is yours. You guys can take the table, right? eat and stuff, yep, explore yep. the village. Um, uh-huh. I think we'll, we'll sit and eat for a while okay. and uh, 
They don't know each other very well, so it's pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. um, Seastone does the majority of the talking. Of course. Uh, he always seems to have more anecdotes to share. Uh, um, yes, true. And he forces Dorne to tell some seafaring stories. <laughs> and uh, Anna notices that he avoids making true talk. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, like, they're good friends. Mm -hmm. He knows her well. And uh, then when they've eaten, um, what time is it? Uh, it is... Let's see, you got here as afternoon was bleeding into evenings, probably five o'clock. By the time you're done eating, I'll say it's a quarter to six. So traffic is starting to pick up sure. in the place. Well, I think uh, we might make it in time for the evening service if we wish to go down to the temple. All right, so you guys leave? Yeah. And as you step out, there is a black and white cat waiting for you. All right, I was supposed to save you some food. Uh, well, uh, he starts digging through his robes. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that would happen. I caught a mouse. Uh, Dorn gives a whistle for Sandra May and ah! gives her some meat that he saved. Of course. Where are you lot off to? Uh, we thought we'd go to the temple. What did you see? What have you learned? Which temple? There's two here. Are there? We only saw that one down the road. There, there's one by by the river. It's uh, to row. Ah, uh, I should pay my respects there as well. But what you wanted me to look for, uh, let, let's move off the road. Or perhaps you can tell us as we walk towards the temple. Fine. And uh, he's going to do an acrobatic check real quick to jump on someone's shoulders. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he makes it. A 19. I mean, he's a monk. He's going to make it. 19 plus 9, so 28. He yeah, lands. It would, it, would take, it would take nothing short of a miracle for him not to land. Yeah. Uh, we'll see who he lands on. Okay. Anna. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly you have a cat on your shoulder. I am not upset about this turn of events. <laughs> <laughs> and he purchases himself very comfortably on your right shoulder. All right. Okay. Um... Some of the doors look like they've been beaten, bashed open, replaced, banged on, cut, smashed. Scratched. Scratched, yeah. Attacked. So you reckon those, those markings that I was seeing, they're not like a ward for protection or something like that. This is uh -uh. just, this is signs that there's been attacks. The, yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, take a look at that one. So you've gone about a block. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're right in front of the temple to Samak and me. Mm -hmm. There's a home to your to your left, mm -hmm. and you can tell that the bottom of the door has been boarded over. Okay. I reckon that looks like pretty recent woodwork. Well, let's get to service, and then we can ask. All right. Which temple are you going to? I think we'll just go to the one right in front of us. We're okay. here. All right, so you do make it in time for the service. It is just starting. There are not many priests in there. Some of the parishioners are, well, laborers and village people, just a random smattering of people. The presiding priest is a older gnome man. He's standing on top of the altar area so everyone can see him, mm -hmm. you know, since he's what, three feet tall or something like that. Uh, long gray beard, large nose, thick glasses, and he has this very long stole on that half of it is um, with the symbols of Samak and the other half is the symbols of me. Hmm. And he is leading a prayer right there, thanking Samak and me for the day and to bless their nights and the coming evening and all of that. Uh, do I sense, like, I have prayed a lot of prayers in my mm -hmm. life. Do I sense that these prayers have more intent behind them besides just a night blessing? Are they also prayers for protection? Why don't you do a religion check? I mean, ten? <laughs> um, you can tell that it's very earnest. Very earnest prayers. All right. And he is devoted to what he believes, very devout. Mm -hmm. And he ends the service with a, a very nice chant. Um, 
he may have in his younger days had a very nice singing voice, but mm -hmm. he, he's definitely it's getting, it's getting the, the the older wobble. Yes, okay. it has the older wobble to it. It's yep. not getting it. It has. I got you. Uh, gnomes, you know, live several hundred years. This guy is ancient, quite quite old. But through his spectacle glasses, as people leaves, he does take notice of this group of travelers. Are there are there gnomish parishioners? No. Interesting. Okay. No, and Anna, you haven't seen that many gnomes no. in your travels here in Patchwork. No, honestly, we've met Yebe and this man. Yeah. And that's about it. There were some halflings. You, in you've Seabrook. seen halflings in a couple places. Right. You've seen dwarves, you've seen dragonborn, and of course half orcs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And so as <clears throat> the parishioners make their way out to their own evenings, the priest comes up to you. Well, hello there, travelers. I am Brother Pog, the uh, head priest here in... Uh, Green Hills, how may I help you? Well, well, backing up, backing up. Welcome, welcome to, to our humble little temple and welcome to Green Hills. Uh, what can I, uh, what can, what can I do for you? He's adorable. Sea Stone sweeps to the front because that's what Sea Stone does. Ah, brother, sure, and it's nice to meet you. It's uh, good to be in the presence of one. Ah, the monks, the, monks yes, of oh, Blue Sea Keep. See the priests of the the the, the Senecmians. Uh, hey, you're just making things up, boy. It, 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 when in doubt. Uh, yeah, just like me in my younger days. Uh, it's nice to see you guys uh, moving out from your from your little keep. Uh, <clears throat> Right. Yeah. Well. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. We are from. Uh, we are from that keep that has a name. Blue sea keep. Blue sea. Blue sky. Blue sea. Blue sea. You're correct. Obviously, because you made this up. It's your world. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my accent. All right. Yeah. So we're on our way to Mokana. Figured we'd take a drop through here. Uh, has Caloria been through here recently? Oh, Caloria. Um. Scratches his his balding plate, adjusts his glasses, strokes his beard. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he was here a, a while ago. Passed through rather quick. Didn't didn't uh, he uh, didn't stay long. Uh, Just quick quick uh, pop by. Oh, that's a shame. It, it well it it yes. Well, we're looking for him. Uh, he passed through. He went to uh, Mokana. Mokana, yes, up there to the big hearing. city. That's what we've been hearing. Do you know if he happened to, you know, was he planning to stop in at any of the temples there? <laughs> or at the abbey, maybe. Was he going to go to the abbey? Ah. Uh, he, uh... He didn't say. Didn't tell me didn't his, his plans. All right. But he, but he did come through. Ah, uh, yes. yeah, he did. All right. Well, that's good news, at least. Uh, I had some bread with him. Good, good. Always good to sup with them. Ah, uh, right. No, that was a lovely service. Ah, I'm glad. I'm I'm glad you could enjoy it. No, yeah. uh, we've been noticing. Uh, the door to the temple looks excellent, but there are some other doors around here that don't look so good. <sighs> Someone give me an insight check. Hello. But some doors need need repairing around here. We're we're an older village. Right, so we'll call that and uh, seventeen. He is lying. And it seems like he does not want to say anything while the doors are open. Uh, do you think the open doors are the issue? All right, so brother, uh, I was hoping to pick your brain, uh, as a priest. <sighs> what can I do for you, my son? Right, <clears throat> so being a monk, my focus is less on the prayers and more on the discipline. <sighs> yes, yes. But hypothetically. If you were to encounter a group of undead, how would you turn them? <sighs> Clerics or paladins? All right, so turn them. So saying that there wasn't a cleric with you. Bludgeoning is good. Right. No, that's what we thought. That's what we did. All right, thank you, brother. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
blessing of Samak and me. Uh, welcome, and I hope your stay here in Green Hill is pleasant. I think what my tabaxi brother here is trying to say is, uh, is there a way that we could be of assistance while we're here? Persuasion. Great. <laughs> okay, well, he does have a modifier on charisma, at least. Ten. <clears throat> no, there's, there's uh, no problems here for, for uh, travelers like you to, to uh, get involved in. Father, with all due respect, if we can be of assistance, please inform us how. Uh, there's uh, nothing we really need uh, help with right now. Thank you, no, uh, sister. No skeletons coming through. Ah, uh, why don't you do a persuasion check? Great. Yeah, boy, that's a 17. <sighs> skeletons, you say? Um, As my brother sees Could them. one of you close the doors? Ah, it's getting uh, Sure, and I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm good at closing doors. I'm good at opening them, too, but I'll look. Yes. And as you're doing that, he, he pulls himself up into one of the pews. It seems to be a little bit of difficulty. He is, it's built for humans. It's built for larger species, yes. Uh, but he does pull himself up and sits on the edge mm-hmm. and uh, looks at you. <sighs> there, uh, there is a um, little bit of problems through here. Some nights we, uh, uh, skeletons walk the streets. Where do they come from? The east. What's to the east? Forests and the ocean. So no cemeteries, no mass graves. We uh, have a cemetery here that some of them are heading towards. Uh, Some of them make it there and dig and take our uh, deceased back with them if they make it through. There's usually not many that come through, maybe a top of 10. That's most I've seen. What seems to be their intent? If they're not destroyed, um, are dead, or random people from the, uh, the, um, village. I'm sure you've seen the, uh, doors. So their intent is to gather people? Yeah. And they take them somewhere between here and the sea? We don't know where they take them to. Nobody's followed. We are usually cleaning up afterwards. But you say there's no more than ten. No more than ten. But they're always armed, have shovels and armor. Shovels and armor. And they seem to want... Their destination seems to be the cemetery. Or random homes. Now these homes, are are they looking to hurt people? Or do they just collect them live? Collect them alive and take them somewhere. How long has this been going on? A while. How long is a while? Months, years, weeks, days? Months, almost a year, maybe. That is a long time to not know where your people are being taken. Uh, yes, we we have. I know. Uh, watch Captain uh, Sophia has... Uh, been contacting her her her, her, her uppers in Okana to uh, report. I she hasn't gotten anything back. No aid has been sent. Nothing. You you if you want to investigate or help, you might want to swing by the the watch stuff, the watch guard. Thank you for taking some time to talk about what is obviously a painful subject. It, it is. Um, we also don't know when they come. It is random. Do they ever come during the day? Always at night. But no rhyme or reason. It's not like they come every second Thursday or something. He shakes his head. We Different times during the night. Different days. Different weeks. You, we can't, uh... We can't, uh... Guess when they come. 
So it could be two days in a row and then not another month. Exactly. Have you ever sent anyone to track them? I I don't know if we have. Um, watch Captain Sophia Understood. would know. Understood. Yes. Um, is there a place where I could say a quick prayer before we leave? You could say prayers wherever you want. The and the builders hear all. Right. But do you want a specific place? Um, my temple here is mostly for Samick and me, but you could pray to all the builders here, but there is a a temple to Ro by the river, and if you're, if <clears throat> he looks a bit hesitant, if you're devoted to Taff and Taff, there is a, a small building by the cemetery. Is there? Uh, yes. Right, well... She approaches uh, like a like a little alcove and lights a candle and says a basic thank you very much for Frankie's new digs sort of thing <laughs> to Samick. Yeah. And then okay. uh, she intends to go pay her respects to Rome. Well, I will be headed to the other temple if anyone would like to join me. Yeah, I could uh, I could go too. Um, Siston uh, Dorn? Um... More than comfortable to, perhaps. Why don't we wander the town, you and I, and we'll see what we can see with the dwarfs and things, see if we can see any pattern. All right. So the boys go off Mm -hmm. while Anna and True head towards. Maximus um, jumps off of your shoulder and goes off to wander. He's probably a bit hungry since Seastone didn't bring him food. Right. He goes off to hunt. All right. Uh, Anna and True, we'll start with the two of you. Right. You guys go east. You follow one of the roads east to another crossroads and then another crossroads all the way east. Uh, It is a bit of a a winding path to get Mm -hmm. to the Temple of Ro. It's the Ro's temple is not a center place here in Green Hill. Is it maintained? It is maintained. Yes. Are Uh, there are there lights? Has there been a service? There are candles in the windows. All right. Uh, it is another domed building like all the others, but it is smaller. Uh, it is also surrounded by a few trees. All right. Uh, it is, it is obs- half obscured by trees. Okay. So kind of hidden. Hidden. Mm-hmm. Um, Anna will approach it. Okay. It is open. All right. Um, there is a figure in there. A robed figure in there up at the altar in the midst of a prayer. Is there anyone else? Any any congregants? Um, there is no service going on right now. All right. But you can make a quick perception check. I'm really, really liking uh, 17 as my number for the night. <laughs> uh, you can tell that there have been a few people through. All right. Uh, a few people have made their respects and whatnot, their own evening prayer time. Sure. There has not been a service. Sure. All right. Also, the the priest there is a dragonborn. All right. So the figure that Dorn saw earlier, perhaps. Yes. The golden dragonborn that Dorn saw earlier is there. And um, they do not notice you coming in. Probably at this time, you know, a lot of people are coming in and out, so they're doing their own prayer. Sure. Um, Anna sort of ducks into one of the pews mm-hmm. uh, and kind of gives True a sort of gesture like, oh, just just a minute, I won't be very long, and kind of settles in to kneel down and um, says kind of along the lines of, uh, hey, listen, um, you seem to be very involved in the lives of your people. This appears to be a town that could use a transition could use a change and if that's what you're in charge of it seems like as good a time as any to make a move Anna is that type of prayer <laughs> okay um when she's not praying like a memorized like meditation okay um i want you to do a a religion roll with advantage oh okay 
Right, so 17 again, <laughs> hey. And, okay, Anna, you say your prayer, it's it's very Anna-esque, it's uh-huh. not vehement, it's not pushy-pushy. No, but it's, it's just pointing something out. Yeah, and as you open your eyes, look up, you see the dragonborn woman at the altar, and standing on the altar is the outline of a human figure mm-hmm. with and a, a funny, funny hat. little hat. Uh-huh. And he's smiling and looks at you, raises an eyebrow, and you hear a voice in your head. Why do you think you're here? See, I thought that was probably the case, but I wanted to be sure. Uh, roll me perception real quick. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Um, you hear a little gasp from behind you. True is staring wide-eyed at the figure of Ro standing on the altar. Uh, Ro, this is true. True, this is Ro. Um. Yeah, yeah. He said yeah. that uh, we're here because of what's been happening. I mean, we're actually here because this is the town that the road comes through, but the timing seems to be his doing. Yeah. True is kind of on a single word thing at the moment. She's shocked. Yeah. She's ab- Anna is surprised at how shocked she is. And then realizes, like, it'll occur to her hours later that most people have not seen a builder. <laughs> like, have not had direct information. Like, Unless if, they're priests and right. fully devout. Right. Uh, Does the priest just seem to notice this is happening? I, I rolled for her. She got a four. So, no, she is not noticing this. <laughs> None of it? Like, she doesn't None hear Anna talking or anything? No, she's, she's just, really like, in the zone, prayer. man. And um, <laughs> Ro kind of looks down at her, and he has this indulgent smile of a parent Mm. like when a child is doing something and not Mm -hmm. noticing that the parent is watching and Mm -hmm. is taking joy and he has that look towards this dragonborn right now samick and me have they been around uh not recently why they have many devout followers here ro disappears and appears right in front of you He's still transparent, like he's not fully here. I wish he wouldn't do that. It's like, it's like that spell that Runt did, where he just kind of went into existence. Misty step. Sure, call it what you like. You can do that. I know I can, I just, I've never, I don't like how it looks. Ah, yes. <clears throat> they are dealing with other things that are really taking their attention. I can tell you, Taff is missing. Oh. Taff is in hiding. So the situation is worse than I'd realized? Yes. Then perhaps I'd better stop by the... Is it a temple? Or is it a, a shrine? It's more preparing dead bodies for death. It's a morgue? It's more... Pre- yeah. It's a mortuary? They, it's not really a temple to them. The temples to the twins are not near civilization. Really. Understood. Uh, if you, Still, someone should pay respects. If you want to, go for it. Honestly, if you do anything, prayer for them or anything, they will hear it wherever. Their life and death. Geography is important. To some. To me. You may use this space for them. This space? Yes. Will it bother her? I'll make sure it doesn't. (laughs) Understood. You have a ring. Ah, yes. Uh, Frankie gave it to me. No, no. You have a Sana Ashun ring. Oh, this one? Yes. Good. Yes. There are more. Are there? Here? Yes. Are there other paladins? Yes and no. Oh. They're dead. Yes. Are their graves accessible? Could I visit them? Unfortunately, no. Ah. Well. As you say, geography doesn't matter. Yes. And, uh, well, when me spoke with Sana Ashun to bring you here. Mm-hmm. 
It was on a condition that those rings came and an item for you. I had a dream that you were in. Oh, recently. Really? Should I feel flattered? I don't know. Um, there was a glaive. Like a large glaive and, a, and like a ship. A large ship. He is smiling now. When did you have this dream, Anna? I don't know, relatively recently. Yes, I was in a cave with a ship, with a glaive. Yes. That glaive is for you. And there was a, a book and there was a shadow, a, a person, and, you... and somebody else as well. Well, one thing at a time. The book. Uh, do you remember the jungle? When I first Yes, kicked. I remember the jungle. The book is for you, upholding my end of the bargain, because my deal with Frankie. Oh, as I, I, would bring I, didn't, I didn't hear the terms. Ah, uh, yes. That book is my terms, with Frankie, for you. I thought that the earrings were... She had two for you. Oh, Frankie. She, she is... loves you. She's very selfish, isn't she? Yes. She will ask him. Any, well, that's beside the point. That's beside <laughs> that the point. That is beside the point. The glaive is for you as well, from Sana Ashun. But she wouldn't give it to me directly. No, you have to be at a certain point to have it. I understand. I understand. That cave has items for all of your party. All of the champions have something there. That's very generous. They will help you tools for your mission here. It's still generous. Now, as to the figure, they are the keeper of that cave. Uh. They are the keeper of that horde. They have been entrusted with the items because they will guard them fiercely. Right, okay. I can't do much about it from here. No. Ro, we're going to Mokana. Yes. And there are undead soldiers wearing the Mokanan crest that have been coming here and beating down the doors. Yes. What would you have us do? <laughs> there is something wrong in Mokana. In Mokana proper? Yes. Yes. It is affecting out here more than inside Mokana itself at the moment, but it is bleeding from the city. So we have to go to the city to fix what's happening here. Yes. You will learn more tonight, and when you reach Mokana. Why had you intervene directly? Well, there is that thing of gods choosing people to act for them and all that. <laughs> Understood. I That's mean, what being a paladin is all about. That's one reason there are paladins and clerics, yes. Who should we seek as allies? Besides this watchkeeper. And the watchkeeper will be very useful tonight and with is she, her people. Is she in the tower itself? Or are They're, they here in town? They keep mostly to the tower and the barracks there. All right. Tava here will uh, help as well when the time comes. She's the priestess. She is the priestess here. And also Shaq. Full orc. <laughs> she runs the orc man's merchantile shop. Uh, it's, it was on your way into town. I imagine it's closed. At this point, yes. All right. Well, we'll see her in the morning, won't we? Well, you'll see her tonight. Understood. Make sure you and your companions are ready. Should we rest now? You may want to. Understood. All right. Well, we'd better get headed back. As for... Do you want to know allies for Mokana? Do you think it would be advantageous for me to know that now, or should I wait? Who are you going to see? Uh, to Lady General P Tassi. Good. She will need your help, and you will need hers. She is the only one of the ruling council who truly believes the rumors of something happening. Anything else I can help you with? I don't know. Of course. I don't know what I'm up against, do I? <laughs> That I trust that I have the right companions. You do. 
You do. Especially that one there. Uh, she's Not the true. shocked to see you. It's been some time since she's seen me. She's mostly dealt with Kasai. I've never met him. Frankie doesn't like him. No, she doesn't. Kasai is special. I enjoy him, though. Well, I rather imagine you enjoy a great number of creatures. I do indeed. Well, Anna, thank you for coming to my temple. You're quite welcome. It is good to see you again. It is good to see you as well. Do you think that Taff and Teth would find it offensive if I prayed as I walked? I don't know that I'll get to the cemetery today if I'm going to rest. They may find it humorous that you pray to them. I don't know that I would call it a prayer, as such. I don't like them very much, you know. Not many do, but they do have a priesthood following. Well then, I will say this. May the blessing of Shana Asum be on Taff and Teth. <laughs> I knew there was a reason why I liked you. And he stands up and fades into the sound of ocean waves and the smell of distant sea. And of course, all the while, the priestess has been praying, not noticing. Anna shifts to her feet and turns to True. But that was enlightening, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We should return to the inn. Yeah. <laughs> you were very, uh, cool. They are not as big as my goddess. None of the builders have been. Yeah, your Sana Ashun is, uh, Huge. Yeah. She is larger than space itself. One of the largest I've heard of. Yes. She's because very powerful. Bigger than um, a glittering overlord egomaniac I've met. That he was a god. Who was that? Uh, some vampire who lived between worlds. You have had the most fascinating life, sister. And it's not over yet. Imagine. What brought you to the monastic life? Well, when I was uh, young, I, uh, <clears throat> I was not with the uh, best of kids. Understood. I, uh, well, I was uh, a thief. Mm. My parents did not like and uh, packed me up and uh, sent me to the monks. They sent you to the Abbey in an effort to keep you out of jail. Yeah. With um, six siblings. At, uh... <laughs> uh, I had many siblings as well. Yeah, yeah. You did? I did. The uh, farm, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was a middle girl. I had, I had older brothers, a younger brother and a younger sister. True stops. On farm. On a farm, yes. On a farm. Yeah. <laughs> Catches up. I, uh, I don't remember. The, the memories are still spotty. There are large swaths of things that I can't recall. I do know that at some point I became a paladin, and that at some point I became a soldier, and that at some point I became an officer. And then I woke up here. There is so much I don't remember. You you will remember. All in good time. They yeah. say when the dreams stop coming is when you're free to start making a new life. But I haven't finished remembering my old one. Yeah. I, I don't seem to have the dreams that the others do, though. That is uh, all right. Yeah. It's part of being a paladin. You have... Dreams given to you by your god. Yes. Which sometimes means that the other dreams that... Is it Kasai who gives the dreams? I don't know who it is who gives the dreams. Jot. Jot. Yeah. 
Well, I guess it means that whatever dreams poor Jot would try to give get pushed out of the way because Sana Shun is so much bigger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the builders are obviously very talented. I will uh, tell you something. The 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 uh, builders, they all came from other places to here. Frankie had said something like that. They were, uh, their worlds either were destroyed or no longer needed them. They were wayward and then came here. I have heard in some worlds, perhaps this is true here, that if people forget a god, if they forget to pray, that the god withers. Perhaps they made patchwork in an effort not to wither. Yeah. And at this point, the boys see you and come trotting over. I've never attempted to track a skeleton before, especially not at dusk. (laughs) I feel that I have experienced all sorts of new things. (laughs) Poor Dorn. I bet it was fun watching him. (laughs) (laughs) Was it? You know, he's getting his face all in the grass and trying to discern what sticks and what's bones. <laughs> his nose screws up when he's frustrated. Dorn, can you give me a quick history check? History? Try to remember your encounter with the skeleton. An eight. Uh, <laughs> it was a big wash. You can't fully remember what happened there. I mean, a lot of stuff. There was, was a going lot on. happening all at the same time. You were fighting orcs and a troll, and then these skeletons showed up, oh, and man. then there was Wyatt. And there was the wagon in the middle of it all, and yeah, I don't. There's so much. It happened all at once. I am not used to road traveling and having my ass hurt, and I'm not used to shooting from a solid surface that's not moving. (laughs) No, no, you're not. One would think that would make it easier. One would think, but no, no. Uh, So the four of you, Mm -hmm. five, if you have a really good perception check and you want to try, um... (laughs) Make it back to the inn and up to your rooms. And bed down for the night, yeah? How many beds are in that room? There is a double bed and some padding on the floor. Right. I reckon we ought to give Dorn the bed. He's limping. I will not sleep with him. I, uh, no. And you look like a nice respectable paladin and you probably won't sleep with him either. No, I won't. All right, I guess that means that he's sleeping with the cat tonight. (laughs) No, I'm not sleeping with him. I wasn't referring to you, kitty. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so Dorn and Seastone get the bed while the ladies get the floor mats Mm -hmm. and a cat curled up between the ladies. Dorn is grateful. He also feels his chivalry and his pride have both been pricked uncomfortably. (laughs) Okay. He feels rather like another ranger that we know, like he is in someone's debt, and this Um, is an uncomfortable situation to be in. So I imagine that the, excuse me, (coughs) I imagine that the ladies have filled them in on the details and said we should all go to bed early tonight. Yes, I'm just assuming that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Ro showed up and all the conversation and whatnot. You all go to sleep. Are you telling me that the builders talk to you? I, yes. Like on a regular basis. Um, not as often as they speak to Frankie and, and Runt. Oh, but you're a paladin. Why aren't they talking to you? Well, you're a monk. Why aren't they talking to you? That's a good point. I always assumed that I just wasn't righteous enough. That I was, you know, of little faith. You go to sleep, Seastone. Well, you know, I try, but you've got to understand, this woman just had a, you know, she's reporting a conversation that she had with Ro, and I've never seen True's eyes that large. She's Seastone, staring. if you don't go to sleep, you're going to have disadvantage. Right. I mean, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> but do you understand? I've never seen True look that shocked about a person. And you know much of her story. Right, I mean, like, she's genuinely gobsmacked. 
Do you know what it takes to make true gobsmacked? Yes, I do. It's quite a bit. Something big. So Anna was just chatting to her. Yes. She's just chatting to him. Chatting to a god. Like you do. Like you do if you're a paladin or a cleric. Like you do. Now she had a good point about being a monk though. I should probably pray more. And so you fall asleep in prayer. I fall asleep still wondering about it all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. You all are asleep. Noises outside wake you. Thuds, crashes, shouts, and one or two screams. Right, so I imagine that's our cue. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I did not change out of my clothes for the night. I just got in bed, so I get up. I'm, I'm stiff. I'm not okay. going to lie to you. What is everyone's reactions? We see Dorns as he's getting up stiffly. Well, everyone was prepared for this. We were told to be ready. Good. I was sleeping in my armor. <laughs> now, just as a note, there is a new rules on sleeping in armor in Xanathar, and I ignore them. Oh, about about not getting a full rest? Yeah. I... Well, they wouldn't have gotten a full rest here anyway. It no. wouldn't be me like... But we're just going with it. All right, so your room is on the third floor, the southeastern corner of the um, the inn. All right, so Dorn throws open the window and sees if he can see anything. Roll me a perception check. I will have allow only two people do a perception check. 18. 18, very nice. I had my DC set at 16. Okay. The village is under attack. By how many, can I tell? <clears throat> Let me describe the scene. You do your DM thing. <laughs> The village is under attack. There's movement in the streets, forces coming from the east and north, clanking of armor. Some have started pounding on doors. Uh, you definitely can make out the watch guards. There are seven of them already engaging and rushing into the town. Uh, they are the ones coming from the north. As you see, the invaders are skeletons in heavy armor, just like yesterday. Those skeletons are marching in formations through the village from the east. Uh, several have peeled off and are bashing against doors, trying to break into random homes. They are starting to pass the inn uh, in their groups. This is definitely more than ten. There are sword wielders, there are bow wielders, and about a third of them have shovels on their backs. Uh, there are Full armor, well-preserved bones. So let's see. On the north-south road, you see the uh, Mokanan watch guard. They are carving through the skeletons with their long swords. And in front of the orc man's storefront, which is to the south of where you are, you see there is an orc woman battling with the undead as well. That's what you see from your southeast window. The five of you charge out of the inn into the street. Uh, there are skeletons moving about the guard, fully engaged. You don't see the orc woman anymore, but looking to the east, you see a golden dragonborn now engaged as well, throwing spells. Ghostly flames dropping from the sky, hitting these skeletons. There are several down already. Quite a few are bashing into doors. There's a good selection going further north to where the cemetery is. And that is where we're going to end it as you see the battle ensuing. The largest number you've heard of is 10, and this is much, much bigger than that. And Anna, I actually want you to make a quick perception check. There are skeletons everywhere. Yeah, there are. And there you have it, another episode of K&K &K Play d and is in the books. Ah, <laughs> shut up. Sandra May is very sensitive about that, you know. She, she, she's been working on her voice. Ah, ah. <laughs> Sandra May really appreciated her spotlighted. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
See, she really appreciated her spotlight. Now, if you guys really appreciate it as much as I did, please, please let us know. You know how to find us. We're on social media at KNK Play D and D on all the usual suspects. <laughs> <coughs> the music was. Mo- I think I were the ones for this, or did you yeah, have a piece? No, that comes in next week. That comes in. Keith writes a piece next week. Ambient Yay. soundtracks, things are from tabletopaudio.com. Just as usual, hit like, hit share, let your friends know about us. We would like them to be part of our community mm-hmm. as well. And finally, I'm the first K, the Keith. And I'm pretty sure we forgot something, but I'm the second K, current signing off. Thanks for listening. Ah!